Hey there, Alex Kidman here, and today I'm taking a look at a phone that you can't see yet, because I'm just about to drop it into frame. And it's this, the Nokia XR21. Now, usually I'm not quite that rough on phones, but for this phone, I very much can be, because the entire point, and in fact, the reason why you might want to buy the Nokia XR21 is that it is really, really tough. It's a successor to the Nokia XR20, and that was already a pretty tough little phone. But in upgrading its toughness, Nokia has also made a few other compromises it's worth knowing about. So let's dive right into those. So in the rugged smartphone space, you don't have a whole lot of competition. Samsung's got a few, Motorola's had a few over the years. Uh, here in Australia, Telstra has had its Telstra Tough range and it's got a few other things that it's sold. But really, they've always been this kind of niche of people who've wanted slightly tougher than usual sort of phones. So the XR21 very much follows the rugged phone playbook. Most rugged phones are chunky, and this certainly is. I mean, you can see that. And at 231 grams, it's also kind of heavy. I mean, by phone standards anyway. The XR21 only actually comes in two colours. So this is the midnight black that I've got here. There's also a pine green if you like a little bit of colour, but that's all you've got. And you're not really going to throw a case on this because of its ruggedness. The ruggedness is the key thing. So a lot of phones, even those in the premium space, will have like up to IP68 rated resistance. This is IP69K. So what does that mean? What do those extra numbers and letters mean? Well, basically, what this means is it should be fully dust resistant and mostly water resistant, but really specifically tested with high pressure, high temperature hoses. So if you've ever seen like industrial kitchens being washed down with those massive, massive hot hoses, theoretically, I could fire one of those at this phone and it should survive. That's the level to which it has been tested. That's pretty darn impressive, really. Now, have I done that? No, I, I don't have one of those hoses for a start. I have kind of thrown it around a bit, dropped it a bit, got it a bit wet. I'll show some of that off throughout the video. And look, as you can see, this is still a perfectly functional phone. It still works just great. Not a problem at all. And that's a really, really good thing. But that ruggedness is the point. So in terms of other display features, 6.49 inch display, 1080 by 2400 resolution, supports up to 120 hertz refresh rates, which is nice to see in this kind of phone, although not entirely unusual at that $799 price point. It's not super bright, which, if you're working outside in really, really bright temperatures, might be a little bit of an issue to you. It's not awful, but there certainly are brighter phones out there. One of the things I do like about the Nokia XR21 is that it still has a standard headphone jack, but more than that, it's got these couple of buttons. So it's got this button here and this button there. Now, what do these do? Well, they're action buttons, and there used to be a style not that long ago for a lot of phones to have like a single button usually for invoking Google Assistant or on Samsung phones Bixby. And that's not what these do. These are programmable buttons. You can set them to all sorts of different actions that you might want. And it's a sensible kind of move for this kind of phone because I could totally see someone working in a hazardous environment. They've got gloves on. They can't exactly get the phone to work. The screen won't react to a lot of gloves. You can obviously get those gloves with the little linings in them that will work, but won't obviously work all of the time. Having those buttons to quickly be able to do one or two key things could be very, very handy. Nice to see. Good inclusion. So this is a tough, tough phone. But tough, tough phones often come with compromises elsewhere because in order to make them tough to a certain price point, you can't have everything, and this certainly doesn't. And the first area where we do see some compromises is in the camera. So you get a 64 megapixel primary wide and 8 megapixel ultra wide. While on the front, you also get an 8 megapixel selfie camera. And look, that's a bit of a step up from the XR20. That was 48 megapixel primary. But it's still very much on the average side at $799. That's starting to stretch up in price terms. And you really do see that in the photos you get out of that. Now, like any modern phone, yeah, look, this isn't a terrible camera phone. But if camera is important to you, you can do a heck of a lot better than the XR21 will manage. It is definitely a shortcoming of this particular phone model. And again, it's just in service to that ruggedness. They've put all the money into making this as tough as boots and considerably less into the camera, I'll say. 
The same is basically true of the processor. So it's running on a Snapdragon 695 5G chip with 6 gig of RAM and 128 gig of fixed storage. That's not a lot of storage, especially when you consider that you've also got to throw in Android and there's a few pre-installed apps, although not that many, on this phone. So how does that compare? Well, you can find full benchmark results on my written review at my site, but basically not spectacularly well. This is pretty much bottom of its class at its price point, comparing it against other phones that you could get in this price category, things like the Motorola Edge 40, the Google Pixel 7a, or the Samsung Galaxy A54. It runs, you know, lower than all of those in straight benchmark terms, and especially in graphics terms. This is not a gaming phone by any stretch of the imagination. One thing I do like, though, is that this is a fairly plain Android phone, and HMD Global are promising three Android updates to it. So it's stock Android 13, basically, and it should see through to at least Android 16. That's really, really nice to see. Good call. I like phones with long support lives. And three years isn't long, long, but it's a heck of a lot better than you see out of a lot of other manufacturers. On the battery front, so this is an interesting one because you might think, well, it's a big, thick, chunky phone. Surely they can throw a big, thick, chunky battery in there. Not quite, not quite. So it comes with a 4,800 milliamp hour battery pack. A little bit lower than you tend to see on the average for a lot of Android phones these days. Generally speaking, 5,000 is about the standard that I like to see. HMD Global's claim is that it can do up to two days of battery life. Now, up two figures are obviously rubbery because a day is up to two days. It's getting towards two days. So to give that some kind of perspective, I ran this through my standard YouTube test. So that's an hour's worth of 1080p video, maximum brightness, moderate volume from a full battery. And what I look for here is at least 90% battery remaining because anything that falls below 90% typically, in my experience, will struggle to last a single day. And the Nokia XR21? it hit 90% exactly. Now, that's not awful, obviously. It does pass my test, even if only just. But it did make me think, yeah, two days is probably a stretch. And look, based on my own more ad hoc testing, yeah, I think two days, if you were really eking away at the battery, maybe. But if you're using it in any more kind of heavy-duty fashion, you're going to need to recharge it. Now, at $7.99, we do start to see some phones offer wireless charging. This doesn't have that. I'm sure, again, this is all to do with it being so robust. You can't exactly build in the cheese stuff and have it work and have it not break in this kind of frame. So you're talking USB-C charging up to 33 watts. One of the features actually I didn't mention there in terms of the charging is the fact that you're also limited just to USB 2 speeds for data transfer. Weird little choice there, Nokia. Not so sure on that one. But then again, I suppose if you're doing it all wirelessly or throwing it up to the cloud, maybe that doesn't matter quite so much. So should you buy the Nokia XR21? Well, look, there's exactly one reason to buy this phone. It's tough. It's very tough. And look, I feel like I might have mentioned that already a little bit before. Everything on this phone exists in service to that toughness, without exception. So if you're working in an environment which is hazardous to electronics, easy recommendation. If you have kids who are really, really brutal on phones and break them all the time, yeah, this would pretty much do the trick most of the time. And in fact, they could even take advantage of the fact that HMD Global is so confident in the toughness of this phone that here in Australia, at least, if you break the screen within the first year, they'll replace it for free. That's a nice inclusion. But in the wider phone market, look, yeah, you've got to balance it against the fact that while it's rugged, it's not particularly fast, it's not particularly blessed with great battery life or spectacular cameras. If those factors are important to you, you can do better for this kind of money. This is still a niche phone. It's a really good example of what you can do with a rugged phone. It's great if you need that ruggedness, but you've got to really need it that rugged. Anyway, that's my take on the Nokia XR21. What do you think? What do you want to know? Let me know. And as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.